Good day and welcome traders. In today's video, we're going to focus on a supply and demand trading strategy. The only three rules you need to know. You will learn in this training only three rules to trade supply and demand. How to find supply and demand zones. How to get sniper entries into those zones. And stay till the end because I'm going to show you a secret method on how to identify the strength of a zone. Before we get into this video, make sure to watch my free supply and demand trading course. It's in my playlist section. There's 14 videos all at intermediate level. The link will be available at the end of this video. Back to the video. In this supply and demand strategy, we're going to be going through a three step formula. Number one, first analyze the higher time frame market structure. Higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows. Is it a bearish or bullish sentiment? Number two, look for higher time frame supply and demand zones in alignment with the market bias. If the higher time frame trend is bullish, you look for demand zones. If the higher time frame is bearish, you look for supply zones. Number three, then we look at the lower time frames for entries based on how price reacts to the higher time frame zone. We look for supply and demand zones forming on the lower time frame. Number one, higher time frame trend bias. So first we want to determine the bias of the trend. If we see the price is going up with these continual break in structures to the upside, this lets us know we're in an uptrend. If we're in an uptrend, we're only looking for buys and bullish order blocks. A downtrend. If we see price is going down and keeps breaking these structures to the downside, then we're only looking for sells and bearish order blocks. Number two, higher time frame supply and demand zones. There is only two criteria to determine a valid order block. Number one, it must have broken structure. Number two, increased volume after the order block has been created. If you look at this example over here, we're in a four hour time frame. We've determined an uptrend bias because we can see that the swings are getting higher and higher and we continue getting these break in structures to the upside. We notice this massive momentum candle over here which suggests smart money has gotten involved in the markets. It breaks structure. It leaves behind an order block, which is the last bearish candle before this bullish up move. We mark out that order block and we wait for price to come back into the zone. Market comes into our zone. Then we drop into a lower time frame to look for a potential entry. Since we're in an uptrend, we're only looking for demand zones. So here's another close-up example. We got this break in structure to the upside, this massive bullish institutional candle. It left behind this indecision candle, which is our four hour demand zone. Then we wait for price to come back and tap into this zone. We drop into a lower time frame. Number three, lower time frame supply and demand zones. So this is on a lower time frame, five minute now, and you can see price tapped into our four hour demand zone over here, but we don't enter right then and then. We wait for another break in structure. We see we got this break in structure to the upside and the momentum candle that created the break in structure. We take the last bearish candle before this momentum push. We mark that out and that becomes our confirmation entry. Now I want to share with you guys a secret method I've discovered. What we do is we get this big break in structure, this momentum candle leaves behind this order block. We mark it out. And then as we're waiting for price to come back and tap into this zone, we take a volume profile tool and we mark it over the zone. And as you can see, it is marking out this supply zone as a high liquidity zone. So this is the point of control in the center, which is the highest traded point on the volume profile. Once that coincides and aligns with the order block, 
we know that this supply zone is a high liquidity zone. So we enter at this point and this becomes our target because we know there's liquidity resting at this point. The target always becomes the next supply or demand zone or imbalance area where the liquidity is resting. We can see with the volume profile that there is liquidity resting in the supply zone above. Another example, number one, market trend bias. So we can see we had this uptrend and then suddenly we had this massive break in structure over here. And then we got another lower high, which is signifying to us that price is weakening and now it is going on a downtrend bias. Number two, high time frame supply and demand zone. So we get this break in structure over here, this big momentum push to the downside. It leaves behind an order block which is this indecision candle. We mark out this order block, which is our one hour supply zone. We wait for price to come back and tap into the zone, and then we drop into a lower time frame. Pro tip guys, this confirms the zone strength. Once again, it's the volume profile tool. So we got this break in structure to the downside, this massive institutional candle. We know the big players have just entered into the markets. We mark out this zone, but what we do is we pull a volume profile tool over that zone to confirm there's liquidity in that area. We can see the point of control is right in alignment with this zone, which is letting us know that this is a very highly traded zone. And more than likely, there's more orders resting in the zone. So it's the perfect place for entries. Number three, lower time frame supply and demand zones. So now that we know that this is a high liquidity zone, we tested it with our volume profile. We know that there's a break in structure. We know that there's an order block resting here. And these are our entries. Entry number one and entry number two. Price came back twice into this zone. Price comes up, it taps into our one hour supply zone. We don't enter there. We wait for a break in structure. We get this break in structure, lets us know there's a weakening of the trend. It leaves behind an indecision candle, which is this supply zone. It's order block over here. We mark it out and this becomes our entry number two example price comes back up to this one hour supply zone it taps into it we don't enter there we wait for a break in structure we get this push to the downside break structure leaves behind this perfect indecision candle we mark out the supply zone price taps into the zone and that is our perfect entry if we miss that entry price breaks structure again over here leaves behind another indecision candle. We mark out that zone, it taps back in, and we can get our second entry over there. So as you can see, we can stack our entry points, confirmation and for targets. What we're gonna do is, this is the whole structure zoomed out now. We pull a volume profile at the bottom and at the top. So we can see that this zone is our strong supply zone for entries. We can see that this zone is a strong zone for targets. This is our demand zone, this is our supply zone. So we got in our entry over here. We know that this is gonna be a great target because there's liquidity resting down here. And the market likes to move all the way up, cash out, move all the way down, cash out. This is how the market makers actually make money in the market. So once we tap in with the banks, we get out with the banks as well at these liquidity zones. So can you see how we can use volume profile to our advantage to determine if zones have a lot of resting orders and liquidity? Let's look at some examples on the charts. Here we've got a coin called Mask USDT. As you can see, it's on an uptrend, signifies by these break in structures to the upside. We've got this massive break in structure over here, break in structure over here, and break in structure over here. So you can see it's been on an uptrend. Then all of a sudden we get this break in structure to the downside, which shows weakness in the trend. And that shifts our bias from this bullish bias into a bearish bias. Then we wait for price. We drop down into a lower time frame. As you can see, as we got this break in structure over here, it left behind a nice supply zone. So let us wait for price to come back into this zone. There you go, price taps into this zone and this becomes our confirmation entry. Our target will be all the way down here because we can see 
this massive momentum came out in this demand zone over here. Look how much liquidity was needed to push this massive order up. This is the bank's order. Let us play and see what happens. Price tapped into our zone again, and there you go. Boom, hits our target perfectly. So as you can see, we could have got two entries, an entry over here and an entry over here. We would have entered at the zone, stop loss would have been just above the top of the zone, and our target would have been all the way down here for a nice 52%. Thanks for tuning into this video, guys. Happy trading, and please do let me know how your experience goes with this strategy.